The cephalopods include squid, octopus, cuttlefish, nautilus, and the extinct ammonites. They are extremely numerous, but only about 700 species are alive today. They live only in the ocean from tidal pools to the deepest depths. They grow very fast, usually living just a couple of years. They are characterized by a fleshy head from which a ring of tentacles protrudes around a chitin's beak. They all have a siphon which is used for breathing and jet power travel. Unlike the other mollusks, cephalopods have brains and are very intelligent. They also have eyes that can see as well as ours do. Many are venomous. Except for the nautilus, the shell has been reduced, become internal, or completely disappeared from most species. All cephalopods are carnivorous and seem to eat just about anything, including each other. Lobsters and crabs are their favorite food today, and fossil evidence suggests ancient arthropods like trilobites might have been too. Our local cephalopods are very common but poorly preserved as internal molds. They usually had straight, cone-shaped shells, but a few were coiled. The shells were divided into chambers, with the animal living in the last one. Each chamber was connected by a tube or siphon hole, which allowed the animal to fill the chambers with gas to make it float or sink like a submarine. This display from the North Dakota Geological Survey shows what various forms of ancient cephalopods may have looked like when alive. Cephalopods have a powerful parrot-like beak that they use to tear apart prey. This brachiopod, Raphnosquina, see arrow below, may have been bitten by a cephalopod and survived to repair its shell and live a long time afterwards. So that indentation may have been uh, beak scraping against the shell. Most cephalopods can squirt ink. When they are scared, they squirt it into the water, then swim away very fast, hoping the predator will be confused. They can also change color. When they are red, like this giant Pacific octopus, it usually means they are mad. They can match the color of almost any background and hide in plain sight. I will also add that I have seen octopus do quite a bit of uh, mimicry, where they will actually take their tentacles and make them in the position of other animals. Uh, there's actually half a dozen different animals that they can imitate and it is quite incredible. It is believed that during the Ordovician these were the largest animals on earth and most likely the most intelligent. This shows uh, a cutaway of the a cutaway of the shell this is a short tentacled species shown here. Okay, what you see is a siphuncle. This is the inner tube. It could flood the back chambers with either gas or air and uh, control its buoyancy to float or sink and become neutrally buoyant, which helps it to swim much easier. If you're not fighting against sinking or floating, that's uh, hugely to your advantage as a marine creature. Okay, when this animal was alive, the outer shell might have had some type of coloration. You see some of the internal structures below this layer, which you're seeing here, and they look like sutures. Um, that's these external uh, disc-like appearance. On the inside, if you can, if you can see this, um, you can see the different camera divisions and the septum divisions. The final chamber where the head and the guts and the internal organs were is called the living chamber. Cephalopods have suckers or even hooks lining their tentacles for catching dinner, animals, or inanimate objects. One of the, one of the signs of intelligence that they have been able to show is that Octopus have been able to open up mayonnaise jars, take the lid off of it with their tentacles to retrieve food on the inside. There are stories of uh, octopus, modern day octopus, that have actually crawled out of their aquariums and crawled into other nearby aquariums and hunted the fish 
in the uh, aquarium it stole into, then it will come back. Here's an illustration. Here's an illustration. Back illustrate. out of that aquarium, go back into its home, and actually put the lid back on as if nothing had happened. This has been witnessed. It has been documented. So these animals are that intelligent that they can actually crawl out of the aquarium, travel to another, eat fish, and go back. Uh, this was this was freaking out the people who owned the. Um, the pet octopus that they they thought humans were breaking in to some of the biology labs and stealing these expensive sea fish and then they were shocked to find out people actually spent the night in the uh, in the room it was kept and found out that it was the octopus itself that was letting itself out and uh, stealing the fish it was not known that they were that intelligent I'm going to give a quick run by of some of the mosaic images of the uh, cephalopods and squids and octopus. Incredible camouflage some of these species have. And of course, so a lot of us know about squid from eating them in Chinese restaurants. I can I can attest to that myself. I uh, was fortunate that I lived very close to one of the largest Chinese restaurants in Ohio and they were just absolutely delicious. A little bit of a rubbery texture but they taste very nice. Most of our Cincinnati Ordovician age cephalopods resemble something like this. Broken fragments of a tapering um, cone-like shape. And then you see the telltale uh, cameral and septum divisions. They almost look like, uh, oh, I'd say stacked discs. You get the idea. Almost they have like a uh, pattern of ribbing those little striations, those lines across it from the various chambers. This is a black and white image of a nearly whole one and this is the end here of this is the living chamber and so you see no texture, you don't see the, uh, the lines through it because this is the last chamber, the living chamber. Inside these living chambers you can find fossils of other animals that would sometimes come into that opening of the shell and be fossilized in here. There have been several trilobites that will come in and uh, rest inside this like cave-like opening. The whole thing would get filled in by a sea storm. So we have found uh, cephalopods with trilobites inside the living chamber. Also, the shells, the outer shells of these cephalopods have uh, bryozoans growing on them, coral growing on them, and the, they become the anchors to crinoids. It's very, very common that you have multiple species assembled one atop another on various fossils. The reason why is because the seafloor, just like in today's uh, oceans and seas, sea life is so prolific and they want to make their homes and live very in a very tight constricted space and there's there's numerous life forms so you have one fossil on top of another on top of another in some instances if you uh, if you keep your eyes open and you're aware how to uh, identify these creatures uh, it, it tells quite a tale of uh, the crowdedness crowdedness of the seafloor and all the species that were living on it and it's just like a, when a tree dies in the forest 
the tree will tumble over and there will be moss on the tree, there will be mushrooms on the tree, there will be um, um, little tiny insects that burrow into it. Same thing with these marine creatures, you have the shells being colonized with uh, other animals.